Uinta Mapping and Field Data Collection Software by Juniper Systems is a software that's meant to be customized to match your job. In this video, I'll provide an overview of some of the key features of Uinta software, and I'll begin by demonstrating a simple project where I will map generic points, lines, and areas. I'll then show how Uinta can be customized to match your job, as well as share some real examples of some customer projects and their data. First thing I'm going to do, just going to open you into software on my laptop here, and you can see there's it opens. It just has a list of all my different projects. If I have a big list, I can search out and find the ones I need. But um, you can see you is used for kind of a wide range of customer applications here. I've got kind of a lot of different types of projects on my my laptop here. You start a new project, just select the big orange plus button. You can choose. What type of project? Is it on the device only? Is it imported from a file? Or is it a cloud project that you want to start? For our demonstration here, I'm just going to start a local device only project. Super easy to use. I'm just going to give the project a name. And then I've got to choose a, a template for this project. I can choose from a, a custom template that I pre-created. And I've got a lot of different ones here. And our company, at Juniper, we have a whole lot of these too. You can choose to get one of our custom templates and change it around how you like. But for this demo, I'm just going to choose our basic template. And this is just going to be generic points, lines, and areas. And so when you first, after you started your, your project, it's just going to open to a blank map. And in a minute here, you can kind of move it around, pan and zoom and all that kind of stuff. And you can switch between different base map layers, but I'm going to switch over to the park now. So this is the video recorded on my Mesa tablet. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is connect my GPS, and I've already got my geode receiver paired through Bluetooth, just like I would a headset or something like that. Uh, and I'm going to connect it. Now I'm connected, and you see up at the top there, there's the 9-inch accuracy, so it's telling me my GPS accuracy. When I want to map something, I just hit the big orange plus button, and uh, I'm going to select, in this case, a point. I can choose to write some things about that point. You know some notes about it I could take multiple photos of it I could attach a document but when I selected point it already captured my lat long I just save it and now you see that first point there captured so um, I'm gonna map a second point here so if I find something I want to map I just position my receiver over that point and when I'm ready I just hit the orange plus button select point take some photos if I wanted to it already captured that lat long and save it now you see the second point Next, I'm going to show how to map a line. Now, lines can map be mapped either two ways. I can either choose to add points whenever I want to along that line using manual, or I can choose auto method, which then adds points either by time or distance that I define. But in a lot of cases, you want to use manual when that line is running straight. I'm going to map that first point along the line by selecting that small add button. I move then to maybe where that line is still running straight maybe the line you know starts to t and so i go to that point there and i i choose add again and you can see the lines now getting drawn and you can also see the distance of that line being created up top so maybe the line teed and i'm it moves a different direction when i get over there i just hit add again and it's going to add that third point along the line but i can also map other things while i'm creating that line so i can hit the large orange plus button and it's going to show me my different point options available to me and I'm going to map a point. Maybe I saw a valve along this line that I wanted to map and I push save and that point's now going to be along the line as a separate feature. And so you'll see that here more clearly in a moment. But as I keep moving on that line, uh, I'm going to maybe I'm coming to the end of that line and I'm going to choose the small uh, add button again and it's and say finish with the checkbox there and maybe I want to add some information about that line I can type it and then push save and you'll be able to see that line here and you can also see that point three um, that I had mapped earlier I can touch it and see some information about that if I wanted to I could navigate to that you went to will guide me back to the to that position within the tolerance of your GPS uh, so now, next, I'm going to demonstrate how to map an area. And areas uh, are actually mapped the exact same way you do lines. You can either choose to do it manually or, or choose where it's auto-adding points for you. So in this case, I've chosen manual again, and I've tapped Add. 
the little add button there and it's mapped my first point. Um, now I've mapped to my second. For an area, you do need uh, three points to, to make an area at least. And here uh, you'll start to see my third point added and you can see a triangle. As I, I'm gonna move over and make it a square. So that's just me out walking around with that GPS. Wherever that GPS is, it's the blue dot moving and I say add and next, if I'm done, I would just then select finish. I would enter some information about this area and save it. And now you kind of see a map starting to get completed in this park field there. I can zoom to my position, zoom to extent. It's a really simple user interface. I can select points, choose to navigate to those points. I can then filter to see the points that I want to, turn off the labels. There's some advanced filtering as well. In this case, I've just filtered to some points, turned everything back on, and I can return to my project screen if I like, if I'm done. And now we'll kind of switch back to the office uh, laptop here. I've got that job one, two, three, four in there, but if I wanted to start a new project based on a custom template, so maybe I pre-created one of these. In a, in a different video, you can see how to create your custom templates. It's super easy. But in this case, I've already created one called Utility Mapping Project, and I created a project and based on that template. And here's the data that I captured out of the field. And now when I hit the orange plus button, you see different things show up. Anything you see here can be customized and changed around. I can group my data to, to categorize it and better manage it and more presentable, but you can guide this workflow very easily. There's a little pencil button there on the left. If I select that, I can just add and take things away as I want. So maybe I want to add uh, a point feature that says line damage. And maybe I want to make it red, you know, change it from one of those big snow cone looking icons to a simple shape um, to make the map look a little more clean. Um, but now notice I've just added a new point feature called line damage. It's a new record type. And so uh, anything, if I want, now I'm adding fields, anything I want to know about what type of damage, for example, this is, this is creating a, a record um, with custom fields. Maybe there's damage type A, damage type B, damage type C. Maybe I want to allow for multiple selection. So Uinta is actually a very powerful form design tool as well. It's very easy to create your own custom forms and templates. You, know, you can even add things like conditional logic. Um, if point type A, then show these fields, that kind of stuff. But now when I hit that orange plus button, I don't just see the things that I saw previously. I also see that line damage. And I'm just adding these points from the, from the office. Um, but notice I've uh, very quickly just added some custom fields. And maybe it's damage type A and B. Maybe this next point uh, or line damage is only a, a damage type C, for example. I'm going to save this line damage point. And a lot of, a lot of activity happens from within you into happens from that layers icon. You can filter your data here, change from a map to a list view. So you can see all your data in a list view, in a summary list view, but also just return back to the map and kind of investigate you can choose a, a a record type and data that you've mapped and navigate back to it you can start to see uh you can filter down some of your data and, I, and i'll show some of the advanced filtering here in just a moment just kind of showing you some of the different options within that layers uh, as well so now maybe i do want to filter uh do some advanced filtering so in this case i've chosen valve and i've chosen chosen the field status this so this is show me all valves where status equals needs repair and it's found two I can look at those in the list and so I can start to use this as sort of a work order system where maybe I'm navigating to all the valves that need repair going around finding them and changing their stat fixing them and changing their status so Unta is very powerful in that way and can be used uh, in a lot of you know different applications uh, to make sure you know you can use it as a work order system you can use it to map all your assets. But then once you're done, you can very quickly uh, export your data to Excel. And notice it's going to maintain all of that custom information that you've been, uh, that you collected out in the field. 
and it's very nice and clean and you can kind of customize how this es export works but this is the the sort of standard export you know there's those valves with that custom information in there I can also export to a, a Google Earth file and Google Earth's nice you can share this with anyone and they can open it up you can in Google Earth you can also uh, export to this uh, this file format and if somebody needs it if they're using like a GIS system any kind of GIS will import data that you collected in Uinta it'll import that KML or KMZ file um, directly into the GIS so if you have to share data with a, a GIS somewhere um, Uinta can share it either as this KML file and it can also export to a shape file the next export option you know that I'll, I'll share with you is uh, exporting to a PDF map so here's uh, once I choose PDF I can enter some custom information about this PDF map that I'm going to produce um, you can add your logo um, so maybe this is your company logo so if you've gone out and done some mapping and you need to share this information with a customer this is nice because you can share it um, in a tangible way with the customer and, and give them this either as a file or as a printed map. And as you can see, you can customize it. You can include all your photos or not. Just print the map or not. You can print it to a larger um, uh, a page size. You know, there's some custom uh, information to make the map look good that we've, we've set up. But I'm just using the default functionality here. Exporting to this P nice PDF map. There you've got your map, and it's what you see is what you get. So whatever you see in Uinta, it will export that. So if you had filtered your data, it would have just uh, exported that. But it's going to carry over all that information, including photos. Um, so it's really a, a great feature that a lot of our customers uh, uh, like about Uinta. Now I'm just going to show you kind of a quick list of a bunch of different projects that some of our customers have done and here's here's kind of a an irrigation commercial irrigation project at a, a large uh, townhome project and they've gone around mapped irrigation but also mapped trees um, and all and identified all the trees that need to be removed here's another irrigation project and this is a nice one it shows those simple little shapes uh, making the map look you know really clean let's see next this data was imported from a, a Google Earth file and this is a harbor all the different moorings so Uinta can't does support import uh, so if you have existing data Uinta does support import of Google Earth files it doesn't support import of shape files um, as well as CSV files and uh, as I mentioned earlier Uinta is actually a powerful uh, form uh, uh, generation software as well so if you have complex forms, uh, uh, it, Uinta has a lot of capability to, um, to uh, create nice, easy to use forms. Um, so now in this case, there were some grouped projects, but this is a utility pole mapping uh, project. And when I wanna add a new, uh, map a new pole, notice there's a bunch of tabs up there. So those tabs, so if you need to categorize or subcategorize your form, um, that's all possible within Uinta and there's another we'll have another video about uh, uh, advanced form customization but notice there's uh, for this one poll there's a lot of different information and categorized uh, information for that poll so if you do have those advanced forms contact your dealer partner or Juniper systems and we can show you and and give you some examples of how that can work so now there's that poll if I wanted to map another poll it's just going to be the same exact thing I'm just going to I'm mapping these ones just using the office, uh, adding points from the office, um, which is quite easy to do. But all of this could be captured with your GPS as well. There again, you can see the different tabs and sub-tabs. Save those points, and there's. Uh, and then I would just continue, uh, continue along. So again, you went to software, very flexible software, can be used for a lot of different applications, super easy to customize, and uh, used both offline and online. I hope you enjoyed this demo. Um, if you have further questions, please contact your dealer or Juniper Systems, uh, and we'd be happy to help and uh, help guide you in, uh, to be successful with Uinta. Thank you very much.